Birmingham was founded in 1872. The Ealington Land Company formed Birmingham. And um, it was a mining town. Birmingham has all the elements uh, to make iron ore, iron, uh, limestone, uh, uh, coal, and iron ore. And so the city really formed around that industry. Uh, so uh, Birmingham was kind of a rough and tumble town and the uh, city fathers knew that they had to civilize the town some. Uh, so they gave a parcel of land to all of the major denominations uh, at the time. Uh, so they gave some land to uh, the Episcopalians, the Methodists, the Baptists, the Presbyterians, and the Catholics. And St. Paul's is located on this block on a little piece of land that the Ealington Land Company gave it. And they later acquired other land um, to um, uh, build a bigger church. As the, the city grew, more um, immigrants came to work in the mines and the mills. So you had lots of Irish and uh, Italian um, immigrants who came to the city and, and looking for jobs. In the case of the Italians, you didn't have to speak English necessarily to uh, work in the mines. You just had to swing a pick and use a shovel. So the, the city's population really ballooned. And um, the, the Irish and the uh, Italian immigrants were Catholic, so the Catholic population grew. So they outgrew the old church. And, and uh, Father O'Reilly, who was the pastor at the time, um, hired Aldolphus Druding, he was an architect out of Chicago, to design a neo-Gothic uh, church um, for this new site uh, that they had here that would accommodate a much uh, larger congregation. The neo-Gothic style is like a new Gothic, you know, from the um, original Gothic period in the 12, 1300s, uh, that were uh, very popular then, and it was popular again in the United States. The most uh, famous example of neo-Gothic architecture is St. Patrick's Cathedral in New York City on Fifth Avenue. It was built right before uh, St. Paul's in this uh, new style. And uh, elements of that, it's a very traditional Catholic church building. It's, a, it's built in what is called the Basilica style which has a central nave and then two side aisles and at the terminal end of the building you have something called an apse which is a curved area of the building and that's where the altar is housed. Other elements of it are Gothic architecture uh, has pointed arches in the windows and in the ceiling of the nave. And all of this is to create more interior space in the case of the, of the nave. But uh, in the windows, when you go from having like a little uh, rounded window to a pointed window, you increase the square footage that you can put in a window. And they're also structurally more sound so the windows can be wider. And all of this was to allow more light into the building, but also space where you could put more stained glass. In the Middle Ages, uh, there was the whole theology of Christ as the light of the world, numerous scriptural references to Christ as light. So they took this theological concept as Christ as light and made it into a physical reality. It was finished in 1893. The church was under construction from 1890 to 1893. It was finished then. Uh, the windows were put in. Um, in 1905, the first um, permanent altar was installed. I guess elements of that original altar are still in the church. The altar that is in the church now is the same altar that was part of the 1905 altar. And in that altar um, are three primary elements. Uh, you have on one side, you have grapes, and grapes are used to make wine, and the wine is used, uh, consecrated at the Mass, and in Catholic belief, uh, it becomes the blood of Christ. And on the other side of the altar uh, is a sheaf of wheat,
and wheat, you know, it's used to make bread and the bread is made and the host is then consecrated and becomes the body of Christ. And then in the center of the altar is a lamb and that's the sacrificial lamb and lamb, God, Jesus was the lamb of God and it reinforces the sacrificial element of, of the mass. St. Paul's was made a cathedral in 1969. Um, we were part of the Diocese of Mobile, Northwest Florida, around Pensacola, uh, all of Al in Al Alabama. So they split the diocese up when there were more Catholics uh, in Alabama at this point. So you needed another bishop to minister properly to the congregation. A diocese is just a geographic portion of land. And it's really, a, some of it is a function of how, how large it is, a function of how many Catholics are in that. So if you have a very densely populated place with a lot of Catholics, like in the Northeast, you might have a diocese that's geographically quite small, but might have millions of Catholics in it. In our case, uh, we are all of north, northern Alabama. It's north of Montgomery up. It's the whole state. And I think we have 55 or 70,000 Catholics in the whole diocese of Birmingham. One part of the uh, history that a lot of people may not know about is the, is the civil rights struggle that's been part of the fabric of our, our state uh, since the beginning was that uh, uh, Father Cole was assassinated on the front steps of the rectory, which is the priest's house on 3rd Avenue South. He was sitting on the front porch of the rectory and um, a former Methodist minister came up and shot him and killed him because he had married his daughter, the, me the minister's daughter, to a Puerto Rican. And um, he did not like that and um, he was portrayed to be a black man and um, it went to trial and the very famous Hugo Black, who later became a Supreme Court Justice, was the uh, lawyer for the defendant and he got him off scot-free. So St. Paul's, you have to remember, even though it's, it's a very impressive church, it was built as a parish church, not as a cathedral church. So the word cathedral comes from the bishop's um, chair is called a cathedra. That is the Latin word for chair, cathedra. So that's the root word for cathedral. So within St. Paul's, you will see there is a, a, a large imposing chair uh, in the sanctuary that has the bishop's coat of arms on it. It is the seat. Uh, of the bishop and the primary church for the diocese. And that chair is a symbol of his authority. The Catholic Church has been around since Jesus. <laughs> so we ha we have, we're an old church. <laughs> um, but the primary element of the, the Catholic Church is the Eucharist or the Mass. So that is our uh, primary form of worship. Uh, it embodies the beliefs uh, of the Catholic Church. Um, it has a different parts to it. There's kind of an introductory rite, and then there's a penitential rite where you ask to be forgiven from your sins. There are readings of scripture, and then there's uh, the, the canon of the Mass, the Eucharistic portion the primary point is that we believe that the, the bread and the wine are not symbols of, of Christ or God. They are actually the body and the blood of Christ. So that's something called transubstantiation um, because they don't change in form but it, it's part of Catholic theology and is the elemental um, component of Catholic theology and Catholic worship. We have Mass here every single day, seven days a week, uh, and uh, that Mass goes on, and it goes on all over the world. And the Mass is the same all over the world. The readings are the same, and the elements of the Mass are the same.
Well, St. Paul's is a vibrant parish. I mean, we're downtown and I think we've um, um, maintained our, our, our roles <laughs> uh, better than some. Uh, but uh, it's, it's more of a destination church now. I mean, people used to live downtown when it was built and you walk to church. Uh, now, even though people live downtown now, um, um, and some of those people do come to church here, it is a destination church. So people come from all over the city and the county to uh, go to mass here. Um, it is, um, it's the cathedral church, so you get a very um, uh, proper <laughs> mass service. Um, uh, the, the, the music program is, is, is excellent. So people come for a lot of reasons, um, but um, it's, it's, it's a beautiful structure, but all of that is really secondary to people wanting to uh, worship uh, God um, you know, in an you know, authentic Catholic way.